Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hera TV. My name is Lale Hancock, and I'm one of the Hera advisors. And today I have the great pleasure of having the Honorable Captain of the Navy, Dardana Ansari OBE. So, darling, welcome. Thank you so much, Lale. And thank you very much, uh, Hera TV. And thank you so much, uh, Marinella, and the whole entire team of Hera. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're so excited to have you here. You know, I had the great pleasure of meeting you in person at the Hera and the Mirpuri Foundation Sailing Awards event in Portugal just a few weeks ago. And learning more about you and all that you've done over the years to empower so many. And I was like, we have to have you here so that the rest of the world knows the great gift that you've been contributing and for people to know there's hope in everything. So can you tell us a little bit about your background, kind of like what got you to where you are, what inspired you to be here? And I know that, you know, there's been moments in life that really have not been easy, but how much you outcreated it and really shined. Um, as I said, Lale, that, um, well, I came to England, I won't tell how many years, but decades ago when I was 16 years old, I was married into a next cousin, a family, and I was simply uh, given my hand to my uncle to say, okay, you take this girl to England. So he was coming with his team from Olympic champion team. And uh, I was simply just sitting throughout the flight, sitting there and what nobody was coming and asking me who you are and why, where you're going. And I was actually ask, asking myself and looking at the clouds, which was changing colors every now and then, you know, coming from Asia to European country. So this is something very um, strange because it wasn't a choice, it wasn't a, it wasn't a desire, it was simply just yes, that was a tradition maybe. So I came to England and I was told that you're not supposed to sing, because I used to sing. My father used to <laughs> tease me as a queen of universe. Why? Because I never did any housework. So I used to simply just draw and draw and draw. I was an artist as well. But when you came to England in a European country, saying that a, a good girl, coming from a good family, not supposed to sing. So I was simply just taken aback, fine, wouldn't do it because obviously you're not allowed to. My first challenge was like um, my daughter who was born partially deaf. And this was something like, I could not really take it. I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't uh, really trying to attach myself to that reality. Every time a, a speech therapist came to our house, I would simply lock myself in. So this is how uh, I didn't want to be connected with reality. But then I realized that if I do not understand my surroundings, my, the realities, how my daughter is going to you know, grow um, uh, becoming a positive person. Anyway, Amina is a very famous artist now and she's recognized uh, you know, throughout the world. She's um, partially deaf. She is a karate expert. What I'm trying to say to people is to say, if you've got a disability or if you've got some sort of, you know, you can't do it and you feel, oh my God, I can't do it. You can, always you can, because there is no impossible in my dictionary as Napoleon Bonaparte said. So the thing is that um, I didn't know which way to go. 10 years later, um, we went to a party. And somebody asked me, oh, we, we know you can sing. So my in-laws went there, so I started singing because that was my, my opportunity. Next thing is somebody was from the BBC was sitting there, BBC World Service. And uh, he went out there and he told the team that, oh, I've heard this voice. Next thing I am getting a phone call. Grabbing opportunities has been my virtue. Something that comes your way, do not wait. And Nobody told, nobody had told me at that time, but now I realized that there's a saying in Gujarati language saying that if a treasurer comes to your door and knock at your door, don't say, say that I'm going to wash my face and come back and open the door. Because by the time you come to open the door, the Lakshmi will be gone. So try and recognize those treasures. 
try and recognize those Lakshmis in life. And I think that's what I did. Um, I stayed in the BBC for good lot, 22 years, but moved on in, in one organization, didn't just sit there in one place. It took me a long time, longest time that you could ever imagine. Seven years later, I said, oh my God, what am I doing here? Am I going to grow any further? And someone said, no, it might take you even longer. So you do get all sorts of positive and negative vibes and people tell you all sorts of things, but listen to your gut, listen to yourself, listen to the people that you feel are wise and just carry on. Don't think, oh, I'm, I'm tired. I cannot manage it anymore. I think that's, there are lots and lots of moments when I felt like that, that there, I cannot manage it anymore. Nobody's supporting me, nobody's mentoring me. And one thing, Lale, I feel that we must try and find and locate and recognize that mentor in our life. And I think once I realized that, my life was slightly easier. So sorry, I'm just talking and talking. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. And I think that's the thing, you know, sometimes when we have circumstances that um, are not what we expect, you know, you have two roads. You can go the route of the problem or you can go the route that, you know what, this is a possibility that I just haven't figured out what it is yet. And we have to continue to remind ourselves that there's no one like us. You know, there's only one of you on the planet. You know, even if you're a twin, I have twin girls and they're very different. Even though their DNA might be the same, they're not the same. And it's those moments that we want to give up. That's the moment that you got to give it two more steps because something more beautiful is there. But sometimes it takes us reaching for it when it's that difficult. What if we didn't have to wait till it's difficult <laughs> to reach for it? You know, um, I mean, there I are watch. moments when, when you feel that you are alone, there's nobody's watching you. There's nobody's even considering the circumstances that you're living in. That is the moment when you should really, you know, listen to yourself, listen to your soul and to say, no, I'm, I'm, I think I'm more, much more stronger than that. I can do it. And how, and you know, when you are thinking like that, when anyone is thinking like that, there's a whole universe working around you. Trust me, it has happened deep down. Think about it that, no, I'm going to do it. I know I'm not fit enough. I know I'm not strong enough but my mind is there, which will make me who I am. And like, for instance, um, taking the opportunity, talking about taking opportunities, is, is the, the Meepuri Foundation. I had no idea, slightest idea before the COVID, when they came to Fan, Fanbra Air Show. And I just simply went in on the aircraft, it said Meepuri Foundation, and everybody was looking at the style of the aircraft and whereas I was simply looking at the Meepuri Foundation, why is it there? Who are the people? Who's behind it? And this is how today we are sitting here that I'm so grateful to, you know, Paolo Mipuri and the entire family, Carlos and Sandra and, and uh, Marianella. It's just, it has, because you are recognizing the moments, that's very important. But be genuine about it. You know, try and be, contribute, try and contribute to your relationships with people. Be genuine. And that this is how we all flourish in, in life. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm such a great, it's been such a gift getting to know the Mirpuri family. Absolutely. Um, and the Hera family. You know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> for me, you know, I was quote stuck in Portugal during COVID. And I had the great pleasure of meeting Marinella and then getting to learn about Hera and seeing that like you said, we're never alone. We've got this incredible, you know, abundant universe that surrounds us, but there's also people, you know, and one of the things that inspires me every day to want to be an advisor with Hera is the diversity of how we're able to contribute. We're not there to just, you know, the whole concept of give someone food, right? You give them a fish, and guess what? They get to eat for that day. But if you teach them to fish, it's incredible. They can take care of themselves. And that's really what Hera is. It's about shining the light 
on women and allowing them to see the, the greatness of them, allow them to expand into the life they would like to create, the business they would like to have. You know, this is not a typical organization that's a charity here. Let me hand you down here. This is what you get. It really is. How do we empower each of us? I think I'm very fortunate that uh, they feel that I'm worthy of becoming their ambassador. So only recently I've been appointed uh, as an ambassador and I'm very grateful to Hera and I'm very grateful to the entire family and uh, Marianella especially. Uh, but it is, yes, you get all these awards, you get all these uh, honors. But the thing is, in my view, I think once we have all these honors and names and titles, it gives you a sense of more responsibility. You've got to work even harder because I am like literally for so much work to do everywhere that I am uh, lots of charities. They always come to me. I, I'm chief, I'm some, some sort of, they want me to play a role into their charity, which is an amazing thing for me. But I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing, I'm focused. I don't want to do 10 things and none of them are correct. So whatever I take you know, responsibility on board and people think well, that I'm worthy of that, I need to make sure, I mean, today we just, I just, um, I think I managed to find one candidate for the, the, mass, the, um, uh, the MBA program that uh, Hera is trying to do. So it's, it's just, you've got to juggle in this world. You've got to, I have achieved a lot and I think I'm very, very lucky to be where I am, that Her Majesty has recognized me, you know, for an OBE and then the Navy thing that you just said, the, the BBC. But what I would like to do is that with my life, if I, if I can possibly give a little bit to somebody else in my life, I think I want to leave a legacy in this world rather than just me walking around as a monopoly. I want to make sure that people around me, if in any way, some of them like for 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you did that for us, you know, I got my graduation because of you. It's just nice to hear that. I don't even remember that how, why people have so much faith in you. And I think that is the reward for us, that people can trust you, people have faith in you, that this person, if she takes a responsibility, she won't let us down. And that's the greatest thing. I do not make promises. I just try, okay, if I am able to, if I'm worthy of doing this, I'll try my best to go out of my way and do it. And I think this is why the organizations, no matter where you go, they want to uh, take you on their platform because you are reliable. Something that you will, <laughs> I was in the BBC, I was known because I was with the World Service, World Today and News, our producer once. And they used to call me, title me as Bloodhound which I used to feel like, oh my God, you know, is this how they feel about me? But then they explained to me, Dana, no matter which story, you know, you, you've been allocated to, you will go right to the end and make sure that you bring results. And that is something so amazing that people around you, then you want to do more for the society, more for the public, more for young generation, more for women, whoever. I mean, Hera is doing most amazing work. What I mean, it's very recently that I've been affiliated with Hera. But the more I'm learning about it, I think such an amazing, amazing work. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully one day we'll be able to spread throughout the world. And we can, I know Hera's voice could go into little remotest areas of the world. That is something which I, if I can contribute to that, I'll feel lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the beauty is Hera has gone through many little cities, big cities, mid-sized cities, big country. <laughs> um, it really has spread. I mean, you know, the, the concept and the support has been going on over 20 years. It's just that in the last few years, it actually became an association. And so um, it's, very, it's very cool to see that it, it, it touches different people in different places. And Yes, what would it take to have it reach every household, for every household to know something else is actually possible, you know? Um, I do wanna talk just for a minute, cause you are the honorary <laughs> captain of the Navy for the British um, military. So can you tell us a little more what inspired you? Like what 
got you into that field? Because that is not something where most women are highlighted. Lani, everything came in my life as a surprise. And when I found out, when I felt that it's an opportunity, obviously in recent years, that has given you more uh, awareness as well. As I said, with the BBC, by default, I just simply, but once I got there, I made sure that, you know, you you are a good editor, you're a good speaker on, on, on radio, you make, you're a good producer. So you want to work towards it and want to make, leave a mark there. While I was working for the BBC, Navy came much, much after that. Um, sometime I feel I've lived 500 years <laughs> in this world. <laughs> so um, earthquake took place in 2005 and I was still at the BBC, but at the same time I was uh, appearing on lots of Asian television in Britain, which were going across the world. So, and I had to earn money for my children. I wanted to make sure that my children get the best education. So whichever work was coming my way, if I could do it, I would just literally throw myself in it. And this is how uh, the earthquake in 2005 was another turning point for my life, uh, is that I went there and I was working amongst, you know, hundreds and thousands of dead bodies. So when you see all that and you are in helicopter every morning and you're going with yeah, lots of UN for you know, charities and God knows how many charities, but you're going and seeing that misery that one man was waiting for his third child's dead body. So it, when you see, oh my God, what am I doing in this life? What have I given, give it back to the, the society in this world? When you are feeling like that, something happens to you. It certainly did with me. I came back to England and the British parliamentarian said, look, Pudana, we'd like to take you back to Kashmir as a, as a specialist. And I said, look, I don't want to go there. It's too much misery. Somebody said to me, go there, Pudana. It might change your life. I said, and I was thinking, how can it change my life going back there? As I was there, there was a House of Lords member in the, from the parliament they were looking for a powerful Muslim woman to head a project in a charity project in Britain to educate Muslim women in this country, in, 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 London, in England. And this is when I was chosen and I was taken out of the BBC and coming to a very different kind of world because I was coming from a very prestigious uh, um, organization. This was amazing. Another thing which was linked to somehow linked to parliament as well. We, it was only 100 women we had to educate. So I created my, you know, uh, put my team together. And within what, seven years, we managed to get more than 9,000 women in our project. And this is, that was the moment when I received my OBE, Order of the British Empire from Her Majesty the Queen. And I can never forget the day that the remember the, when I came to England and I could not even maneuver my luggage trolley, let alone going into uh, the palace and speaking in front of, listening to the, Her Majesty saying, Tudana, thank you very much for coming to this country. And thank you very much for helping out the communities. I can never forget those eyes and I can never forget what you said to me. That made me feel, oh my God, this is something is happening. You know, you've got to. So I started writing my book, uh, still not finished. And next thing is uh, this, you know, the charity carried on and we, we got so many women and we, I mean, we never had the, the target was never to uh, get, find employment for them, but 20% of them went into employment, simply basic English, basic IT, cultural activities, and maybe putting some, some little businesses from home. And women are still thanking us or thanking me. And I wouldn't call it just me, me. I think it was the team that I was working with, with me and we created and it was the mindsets working together. Next thing is I'm invited, you know, when you are an OB, you, you've got a BBC background and you are a television presenter, people just come to you. They just ask you. Um, so I was a, a special guest at, a, at an event, which was a, uh, Asian award ceremony, big, huge. And I saw lots of uh, people in the Navy uniform and I was wondering, what are they doing? And they were interested in my dress up and they wanted to know who I was. Next thing is I am uh, part of the group of the Navy and the first Sea Lord. 
And I was wondering what's going, what's happening now? Because by this time I was understanding if something is moving around you, okay. It took me a whole year. They kept on inviting me to amazing, amazing dinners and functions. And one day at my mom's place, there was a little letter box and I saw a letter just like the OBE letter coming from the palace, from the cabinet office. It was similar with a red stamp, hand, green handwriting. I opened it and the first sea lord said, Dana, I'm going to her majesty, the queen to take her consent. Would you give con your consent to become a lieutenant commander? I became like a statue, stone. I didn't know who should I tell? Would anybody understand? You know, a girl, Asian woman from a third world country. Yes, a, a kind of, she is, they started calling me a celebrity maybe, but inside me, I could not understand that. How do I do this? Okay, I written, I did a hand, I've got a good handwriting, so I wrote the letter in a, by, by hand, handwritten letter. Said, yes, I would love to. And next thing, uniform is coming. It was just like a James Bond film. I've got my assistants, my officers, all there getting about 10 kind of uniform sets. And ever since then, it's been four years now. So I thought, my, you know, rather than just, you know, be a honorary, uh, I was a honorary lieutenant, lieutenant commander, then I became a commander, then I was promoted to a captain last year. What do we do? Shall we? deliver it? Should we help other people? Should we help communities? So that's what I'm working at the moment is helping out the communities living in Britain to say, come and explore these amazing opportunities, which sometimes they don't really want to connect. Forget about asking them to connect with the mainstream uh, society. They wouldn't, although they've lived here, they've been born here, but they still live in their own cocoons. And also the military also lives in their own area. So me, I'm simply the bridge between the two, you can say. And I'm trying my best and I'm a, I'm a motivational speaker. I've trained officers at the Navy. I go onto ships. I've gone into a submarine and I have well, I've done my skydiving. That was before the Navy. So when the people look at me say, you know, she's a simple Asian woman. How can she do that? But no, I want to do things which people have never done that before. <laughs> That's one of the things I love about you, actually. <laughs> you know? One day I just went to the skydiving and my daughter said, I mean, don't, don't even think about it. You will not, I don't want to have a crippled mom at my wedding. Mom goes there and they call my, announce my name and I go again like a statue, but I'm on the plane and somebody just pulled me out of it from 15,000 feet and I'm in the air. So oh, I want to see the world. I want to see the world properly and like just now three weeks ago when we were in Kashkaj, those amazing boat race and I'm grateful to Paolo I'm grateful to the whole Mirpuri Foundation <laughs> I'm just loving them I just love this world and the people living in it definitely well skydiving was one of my favorite things I think I think uh Everyone should at least try it once, even though we know people watching, they think we're gonna be crazy. <laughs> I don't um, care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Well, listen, it's been such a pleasure getting to know you. Can you speak a little bit of like, when you see like Hera in five years, what, what do you see as Hera in five years? On billboards in all in countries seriously i would like to see that and people are wondering what is this hera and we've got little outlets out there to say okay this is if you've got any problem especially women here's the point come and talk to us and we will solve your problem and at the same time you know this educational uh, program that you've started off it's amazing i think i see a lot of potential and i think we need to promote it towards men as well which i'm sure hera is doing it already but we, in terms of getting women empowered, we need to educate men as well, which everybody's talking about it. Because it's like, you know, if somebody's been unkind to a, a for instance, a man if, is unkind to a, to a woman, the other man should come forward to say, hang on, you know, don't treat a woman like this. If it starts happening, it's the message, it's the positive message, not about, you know, women empowerment and we're trying to make them because, some of the countries, some of the communities are scared that, oh my God, 
just like uh, the women project that I was heading, I had to go through so much difficulties to say, look, you have come a modern woman, you're trying to teach our, our women to be modern like yourself, we won't let that happen. So this is the kind of thing that we've got to educate the surroundings as well. Women versus women, men versus women, children versus moms. So it's, it's a message and I think Hera will definitely, definitely do this and I, I, I'm very much hopeful. And if I can play a role in it, I'll feel I, I'm the luckiest person. But uh, yes, I think it's just, I'm waiting for the, the city when Hera is going to build that city. I just want to go and see that city and see the, you know, the flush, flourishing things that people can feel that it is for us. We are connected with this Hera. We are connected with Hera. I think that is something, I think, well before five years, I would like to see that. So hopefully people like yourself who are connected with Hera and advisor to Hera, I don't see it's not gonna happen. It's definitely gonna happen. Oh, I see it, it's yeah. already yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and, and like you said, you know, one of the big um, arches of Hera is actually education and awareness, because that's where it starts each of us has to be empowered, but also be aware and become more aware of the bigger picture. Um, yes. And I would just say that don't <clears throat> not be, because today's 16 year old is, has got much more awareness than when I was a 16 year old. Please be careful. Do not be misguided easily. Be aware of your surroundings. Do your research right. If you are coming from Asia to Europe, make sure you do your research right. Why are you going there? Who's inviting you? So it is all about, I think, dialogue. Dialogue is so important for all of us to say, you won't have any worries if you talk, start talking about it. So I think slowly, gradually, it's happening and it will happen even more. This generation is here to kick our butts. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> they are not putting up with what we put up with. Our generation, we were the good girls, do what we were told. This generation is not about that. This generation knows they're here to change the world. They know that the business as usual does not work. E inequality does not work. If you look at this generation, they're very much about nature, the earth, and they're very much about empowering each other, no matter their race, their background, their, their sexuality or anything else. So I really believe this next generation is gonna teach us a lot of things that we haven't been willing to be aware of, you know? I think also it's very important, Leila, that we communicate with our children. We are mm -hmm. not doing that in. We cannot believe the next generation, the new generation, the younger generation, because it's our fault as well. We have to let them come forward. We are not giving ways because we feel that, oh, I am the one and I should just say that you do as you are told. This generation, as you rightly said, it's not going to happen. But at the same time, I think it's best. Communication is very important between parents and children. Parents do not speak to children nowadays. It's, it's, it's not that because they always say, oh, the child doesn't, he just stays in, in his bedroom or she just stays in her bedroom, doesn't want to speak to me. Some of the parents come to me and say, they speak with you, but they don't speak with us. It's we've got to gain that confidence of children and children mm -hmm. are always children. I mean, I'm still a child to my mother, but the thing is that it is the dialogues, it's the communication skills. We need to have that without that, we will be loser. I tell you, we're going towards not a very, you know, but I see, I see positivity everywhere. Definitely. I'm blessed. I'm one of those moms who's been speaking and communicating and empowering her kids since they were little. So I still know everything that's going on. They actually communicate, but it's effort. We, we cannot just expect it's going to happen by itself. We have to take the steps and actions and be there and also stop judging, you know, as a parent, this is, this is, this is one thing that we learn from generation to generation. And I am one to say, stop the judgments and just let them be who they want to be 
and empower them to who they want to be, you know? Um, but listen, it's been such a pleasure, such a pleasure being here with you. And I know that you and I will work very closely with each other um, in, in <laughs> some of the projects so. that are coming up. And, you know, any final words that you would like to share to people out there who are listening? Stay happy, have confidence in yourself, convince yourself before you can convince someone else. So once you're convinced, about my story, I can tell others and I can say I'm telling the truth. So it's, it's really is having a faith in yourself. It is so essential and so important for anyone, anyone out there who's listening to me or watching me. Please, I am amongst from you. I am from you. You know, you just lots of people relate to me with so many you know, different sort of communities. Maybe I am, you know, maybe I'm an international woman now. Is simply because I, I don't want to be a judgment towards anyone. So I try and understand people. Let's understand each other. Let's, un let's, uh, let's understand Hera and the Mirpuri Foundation, what it's trying to do. And let's help each other, really. You know, you know that is, that's the only way we can go forward. Stay blessed. Stay happy. And today is another new day for us. Please. It's the new beginning. Someone said to me in, in another interview, so you're going to retire now? No, I've just started my life. I've got so much to do. I still honestly feel I have not done enough. There's so much out there waiting for me. I've, every, every day there's an email for me to say, oh, can you do this? You know, it's amazing because you are wanted. It's an amazing feeling to feel that, oh my God, the world wants me. So become that person. Trust me, you will be a happier soul. Definitely. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for you. Thank, Thank you for all you're contributing to the world. And welcome to the Hera family as well. <laughs> Thank, um, you. Thank you everyone for listening or watching wherever you are. And remember, if you guys have any questions, you can go to heracity.org. We'd love to hear from you or even message us below. And, and I'm here to help anyone, no matter which part of the world you are, please, if I'm able to support you or to suggest you or to guide you, if I'm able to, you're very welcome. Fantastic. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.